Hey, sweet. Legacy. When I think of this word, I think of what am I going to leave behind once I'm gone? Will anyone remember me? What will I pass on to future generations? If the average human life is roughly 80 years, comparing this to the age of the universe being 14 billion years, we're a minuscule blip in the history of existence. Gran Torino explores how humans face this haunting reality of our minuscule mark on the grand scheme of everything. When I first saw the Torino with its jagged edges, brutish face and large haunches, I was repulsed. It looked archaic, obsolete and frankly inelegant in comparison to the graceful design language of modern day cars much like Clint Eastwood's character, who initially comes across as rough around the edges and ultimately outdated. I didn't like either of them. They seemed irrelevant and unrelatable. But as the narrative slowly enthralls you to emotionally invest more to characters and their developing relationship with Walt, I was able to care about the car and Walt much more. And who can forget this sweetheart? I finally came to understand what the car meant to Walt. It was more than just a machine and rather a memento, a reminder for a widowed man struggling to find fulfillment in a time so foreign to him. So let's talk about the car. The Gran Torino Sport is an American muscle car named after the Italian city Turin. It was first produced in 1968 initially introduced as an upscale version of a Ford Fairlane. It had much pressure on it to make its own name. The first generation Torino came standard with a 3.3 litre six-cylinder engine with many different engine configurations available. Of note was the infamous 428 Cobra Jet engine, which was a whopping 7 litre V8 making over 250 kilowatts of raw power. The 1972 Gran Torino Sport we see in the movie was equipped with a newer 351 Cobra Jet, although it did produce less power at 190 kilowatts. This was since 1972 was a time of transition for motor vehicles alike. As a result of an oil embargo on USA and the Iranian Revolution, oil prices soared post-1972 forcing the government to introduce regulations to lower oil use and emissions, in effect bringing an end to the muscle car era. The government mandated that all 1972 gasoline-powered cars run on unleaded gas. This forced the third-generation Torino to have motors built with lower compression rates and better fuel economy, in effect reducing horsepower. The Gran Torino was desperately clutching onto the past glory of muscle car engines, but the modern world pressures denied it this. Consumers wanted more fuel-efficient cars with added reliability. The golden age of muscle cars was fleeting, with the introduction of smaller, less fuel-hungry Japanese cars. The muscle car icon became a relic of the past. In an age of decreasing engine sizes and reducing pollution, we eventually see the advent of turbos and VTEC. Both the car and Walt were part of a time that was challenging and difficult for some people to accept. Frozen in time, the car and character struggle to move on to a new and changing world. The Gran Torino isn't fit for today's world of quad turbos and electric motors. It's outdated. But that doesn't make it any less special. Letting go of the past glory to welcome the future is a hard choice to make, but something we all eventually must face. Our past defines our future and should never be seen as a failure but as building blocks. There's no progression if we stagnate. Walt and the car can both either wilt away as a whisper of yesteryear or flourish new life arising from the ashes of the past. Acceptance of change lets Walt transcend his paralysis and cynicism. He gets to move on and ultimately defeat becoming irrelevant 
by living on through Tao. Leaving a lasting legacy, as did the Gran Torino for many cars to come. Thank you.